In this video, I'll show you how to use the ANSYS Fluent Multiscale Multidimensional or MSMD battery model to simulate electrochemical behavior of a single cell battery. The battery geometry consists of a cell and positive and negative tabs. A battery cell is modeled as an active zone, while battery tabs are modeled as passive zones. Electrochemical reactions occur only in the active zones. The potential field is solved in both active and passive zones. To start, I'll load an MSMD battery add-on using the text command interface. I'll enter 8 to load the dual potential MSMD battery model. Once the add-on is loaded, the MSMD battery model appears in the tree. Next, I'll enable the transient solver and the energy equation. Then, I'll enable the MSMD battery model. In the Model Options tab, I'll select Equivalent Circuit Model and define the electric load type and specify C-Rate. To specify the coefficients for the ECM model equations in the Model Parameters tab, I'll use the Parameter Estimation tool which is available in the text user interface. This tool computes the model coefficients from the experimental data. But before using the tool, I'll set values for initial state of charge and reference capacity based on the experimental data. For the ECM model, at least two data files are required for different SOC levels. The file format is displayed in the Fluent console. The first two lines are state of charge and pulse current information, followed by the time voltage sequence. Once I enter the file names, Fluent automatically computes the coefficients and passes them to the MSMD battery model dialog box. In the Conductive Zones tab, I'll specify the active and tab zones. In the Electric Contacts tab, I'll select the battery's negative and positive tabs. Fluent will automatically apply the necessary current and voltage boundary conditions. I'll verify that the connection information is correct by printing and reviewing it in the console, and close the battery dialog box. Next, I'll define the UDS diffusivity of cell and tab materials. I'll create a new material for a cell, specify its properties, and define the UDS diffusivity on a per scalar basis. This is the method for defining the UDS diffusivity for active materials. Fluent uses these two UDS diffusivities as electric conductivity in the two potential equations. UDS0 defines electric conductivity in the positive electrode, and UDS1 defines electric conductivity in the negative electrode. I'll specify diffusion coefficients for both scalars. For the active material, the electric conductivity is not used. For positive and negative tabs, I'll create a material by modifying copper that I've copied from the Fluent Materials database. The tab zone is passive, and the UDS diffusivity for the tab material must be defined through this user-defined function provided by ANSYS Fluent. For passive materials, I also need to specify electrical conductivity. Next, I'll assign the active material to the cell zone. And the passive material to the tab zones. I'll define the thermal boundary conditions on the walls, turn off the flow equation, remove the convergence criteria, and initialize the problem. I'll set the time step size to 30 seconds and run the case for 50 time steps. Once the simulation is complete, I can visualize the results. I can select from a variety of battery post-processing variables that are available under the user-defined scalars and user-defined memory categories. For example, I can display the contours of phase potential for the positive electrode.
and for the negative electrode. Or I can display the vector plot of current. Now I will return to the battery model setup and show how to speed up the simulation with no loss of accuracy using the reduced order method. This method can be used if the battery electric conductivity does not depend on temperature, and the electrochemical reaction can be assumed to be uniform over a battery active zone, which is usually a good assumption. To efficiently use this option, we need to have reference potential fields as a starting point for the domain. We can obtain them by solving the problem for only several time steps using the direct method. Then we can switch the solver to the reduced order method and continue the simulation. I'll reinitialize the problem and then run the simulation for three time steps. Now I can enable the reduced order method and continue running the simulation for the remaining 47 time steps. The reduced order method solutions are time efficient and produce results that are almost the same as in the direct solutions but we are not solving two potential equations, thus saving a lot of computational cost. This concludes the demonstration of using the MSMD battery model for a battery cell simulation in Fluent.